Hello, this is the introduction to international cinema in the 1990s. So, during this decade, basically Hollywood is just straight up pwning the international film industry. According to the American Film Institute, the U.S. produced 10% of the world's feature-length films. However, it was responsible for 65% of the global box office receipts. In Europe, America's cinema was 85% of total European box office revenue. However, European pictures made only 1% of the American market. Such titles as Pretty Woman and Titanic pwned the international market. Now when looking in Italy, the number of native-made films in Italy dropped from 100, which was in 1980, to 40 in 1983. I thought this was kind of an amusing quote by uh, some film producer in Italy. If you speak about the film industry here, you must first consult the mortician. Uh, another quote here by Francisco Mazzilli, the president of Italian Authors Association. Now, Italian kids know everything about American political and social systems through American films, and nothing about their own. So, after 1991, um, Europe began co-producing most of its films, which increased to like a 50%. 50% of their films were like co-produced, and these were dubbed Euro puddings. In some parts, such as Asia and Latin America, they were doing better by serving their own audience. Uh, to this day, India still produces more movies than any other country in the world, but usually they don't appeal to foreign audiences. Most prosperous this decade were the British and the Irish, with the advantage of actually speaking the English language. Over in Great Britain, English movies were known for their American Academy Awards, mainly in acting categories. A couple of the Best Picture Oscars were received for The English Patient, in 1997, directed by Anthony Minghella, and Shakespeare in Love, in 1998, directed by John Madden. They did exceptionally well with box office receipts. Peter Cataneo's The Full Monty was a 1997 production. It grossed in $200 million. Mike Newell's Four Weddings and a Funeral received $250 million, the biggest box office hit in British history. Great Britain's movies were known for adaptations of plays and novels. Its very own culture is liter very literary, and most of the Masterpiece Theatre branch are Shakespeare adaptations, such as Kenneth Branagh, who directed Hamlet in 1996, and Much Ado About Nothing in 1993. As for the kitchen sink brand of filmmaking, it had its major hit with the Full Monty, which is British slang for totally nude. There were many movies from Ireland, though most important were considered to be those dealing with the troubles of Northern Ireland and the Irish paramilitary organization, aka the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. With an economic big bang in Ireland, it brought along great new productions to the new cinema of Ireland. Film credits talk of how good the authenticity is. Uh, most of the previous Irish films were done by British and American filmmakers who basically just weren't Irish, so they didn't get the Irish right. Basically, British and American filmmakers characterize Irish as drunkard buffoons. Characters in Ireland's productions were more influenced by American culture. Foreign influence is due to having little capital to work with and normally gathering finances from American and British sources. Irish films are a lot like British films, where they thrive on strong script and dialogue instead of being driven by a popular cast such as American cinema. France was doing fairly well, sold more tickets, 117.5 million. It was doing the best out of any other Western country except the U.S. Unfortunately, movies produced in France were doing very poorly. Over in Spain, they came out with some trashy home movies from director Fernan Fernando Triba and Pedro Almodovar. The book called him a bad boy, which I thought was silly. Uh, over half of the Spanish films this period were international co-productions. During the decade, 129 films debuted, but only 38 new artists managed to actually establish a career from this. Six of Spain's all-time top grossing exports to the U.S. were Bad Boy Almodovar's pictures, many featuring the wonderfully brilliant Antonio Banderas. Italian cinema was diminishing rather quickly, however, two big hits came out from this awesome country. Il Postino, from 1995, translated as The Postman, uh, made 25 million? Yeah, it made 25 million. It was directed by Michael Radford. I thought this was interesting. The actor Massimo Tro Troisi, who played Mario, had a terrible heart condition and could only 
work for like two hours a day, but he died at the age of 41, uh, which was coincidentally the last day of filming, right after his final scene. Then in 1998, Life is Beautiful, directed by Roberto Benigni, was the highest grossing foreign language film in US history. It brought in 50 million in North America alone. As we go over to Eastern Europe, it gets a little chaotic, I guess. The Polish filmmaker, Krzysztof Zanussi, quotes, before we were dominated by the Russians, now it's the Americans. In 1993, top 10 most popular films in Poland were American. <laughs> Some producers noted that under communism, film was the freest way to express ideas by figuring out a way to say what people wanted to hear, while avoiding censorship. Now with freedom to say whatever, there is nobody to fight against, and they don't know what stories people want to hear. Now, outside of Europe, uh, international cinema was mostly geared to home audiences. Hong Kong definitely had its own thing going with its kung fu and martial art movies. Uh, many well-known artists from that area, like John Woo, Jackie Chan, and Chow Yun-Fat, all grew with their popularity, and as time progressed, eventually flew over to the U.S. <laughs> to work in Hollywood. And as we look in Australia and New Zealand, we see one of my favorite movies, Babe, Directed by Chris Noonan, co-produced with America, but it sucked. Still, Babe was pretty awesome. Australia and New Zealand often co-produced together. One of the biggest hits was The Piano, written and directed by New Zealander Jane Campion and financed by Australia. 